145 top tech sector leaders weighing in on Donald Trump's candidacy, more like smacking it down, saying, quote, we stand against Donald Trump's divisive candidacy and want a candidate who embraces the ideals that built America's technology industry. Eric Hippo says both Clinton and Trump, both of them fear the future. And that by promising to return to old economy jobs like coal, old school manufacturing and punitive tariffs, you say that they will actually hurt the economy, not help it, both of them. Very much so. If you listen to the rhetoric, we're talking about abolishing the free trade agreements that we have, having high tariffs, uh, punishing our trade partners, uh, high taxes. Um, well, some of them want to lower taxes. Well, lower taxes, but to individuals. Then nobody's talking about business. The whole rhetoric is really anti-business uh, on both sides. Uh, and they, they seem to want to go back to an economy of the 70s or the 80s. Uh, what's going to come next? Uh, wage and price controls? Uh, how about the Cold War with Russia? Uh, so they, and then not, neither of them are talking about the future. And if you look at the future, it's right in front of us. It's self-driving cars. Who would have believed a few years ago that private enterprise was going to send people on Mars? It's being prepared as we speak. Um, uh, robots are going to revive our whole manufacturing sector. Okay, that I want to pinpoint you on. People say robots will eliminate jobs. You're saying that these very new ideas like robotics and like autonomous vehicles and all kinds of wearables will actually somehow revive the manufacturing world? How so? Well, the, the history of, of technology and, and particularly the uh, digital technology is that it expands markets. So uh, what's going to happen with robots is that now you have robot technology that is cheap enough that small and medium-sized manufacturers can bring back uh, their, their manufacturing to the United States and as a result they will create jobs. Now the jobs might not be the same jobs of, of screwing the same screw in or, or soldering, but somebody's going to have to take care of these robots, somebody's going to have to program them, somebody's right. going to have to move them around. So, so new saying, jobs will be created. You're saying a massive shift has to take place. Let me push you on this though. Not everybody out there is a Harvard or Stanford or Berkeley kid who can come up with an idea and they're whip smart and they know how to work cell phones like no other. You've got those coal industry jobs that have gone away, in large part because natural gas is so unbelievably cheap. Look, you move forward. We're not asking to go back to typewriters because everybody's using PCs and laptops. That would be a huge mistake. But how in your world would you propose getting the old coal workers and coal miners with the new robotic area and that opportunity? I think it's a question of generation. It's possible that older coal workers, as, as this, in this idea, um, you might just have, want to have to pay them to do nothing. And we can afford to do that. But younger workers coming up who, whose family have been in generations in, in a coal mine, mm -hmm. they should not really have to be in a coal mine. They won't be in a coal mine. But we have an opportunity to educate them and train them for the jobs of tomorrow. The federal government has like a, something like 150 different training programs, none of which are effective. So there's resources there. And, that are uh, being misused, yeah, which is yeah. classic federal government. You have a company called Casper, which I don't know, folks, if you've seen this. This is to disrupt the entire mattress industry. This is where you buy. Uh, listen, the mattress industry is insane. But, uh, you know, he, you've got this company that you've invested in where the mattress pops out out of the box. Kylie Jenner loves it. A lot of people love it. We had it here and profiled it here at Fox Business where we opened one up and you'll see how the mattress pops out. These are made in America. You have plants in South Carolina, Georgia, I believe Illinois too. Yep. So this isn't to say that new economy jobs eliminate all jobs. Of course not. Um, if, if I look at my companies combined, you know, I, I, we have about 270 companies. They have created tens of thousands of jobs. Not, you know, they are entrepreneurs who create jobs for others. Mm -hmm. Casper is a very good example. You mentioned all the manufacturing. Um, the Casper is, uh, is, has a plan to create many, many more jobs. So you multiply that here in the U.S. Here in the United States, because with, with the, 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 the new economy, the supply chain doesn't have to be extended mm -hmm. all the way to Asia. You can control your supply chain right here with quality workforce. Last word. If you had Trump, Hillary, and Gary Johnson in front of you, what is the one thing you would say to them? Tell me about the future. Tell me what, what you are going to do to facilitate, to uh, eliminate regulation, to uh, you know, smooth the path for new people to create new companies. And tell me why that's not something that you would want. Eric Hippo of Lehrer Hippo Ventures. You've created quite a few companies by seeding them and salting them with your money. Good luck. Congratulations.